This is one of the many instances of the Bach motif, where J.S. Bach inscribed his own name as a musical cipher into the notes of his music. The reason why the four letters of Bach's name can be translated into note names has to do with the three hexachords that I went over in the last video. Here are the hexachords from the key of D minor. The names of the notes in the German language actually come from these hexachords. In German, they use the same note names A through G that we do in English, but they also go one further and add the note name H for the note we would call B natural. B and B flat both occur in the larger hexachordal system, so the German musicians who came up with their note names chose two different names for B and B flat. All four letters of Bach's name can therefore be transcribed into musical notes. And even though the notes were produced in a somewhat arbitrary translation, Bach was able to harmonize and counterpoint this four-note motif in several different, highly creative ways over the course of his career. Despite the title, this video is not going to be about only the Bach motif, but also about how to use any irregular or highly chromatic fugue subject. So this video is sort of a sequel to the last one. I'll go ahead and spoil the moral at the end of the video, which is going to be that basically any scrap of melody could be used as a fugue subject. Not everything will make for a good fugue subject, but that is a different question. The Bach motif makes for an irregular fugue subject in at least two ways. First, the subject begins on B-flat, which is scale degree 6 in D minor, the key of this example. All of the fugue subjects we looked at in the previous video on subjects and answers only began on either scale degree 1 or 5. This was one of the questions that Schubert brought to Simon Zechter when he met with him in the fall of 1828 for a lesson on counterpoint and fugue. Schubert came prepared with a series of fugue subjects he had written that began on every possible diatonic scale degree. Here we see one of Schubert's subjects that begins on E, scale degree 3 in the key of C major. It turns out that there is no rule that states that a fugue subject must begin on scale degree 1 or 5. It just so happens that most of them do. But there is nothing particularly difficult about fugue subjects that begin on a different scale degree. You simply transpose the subject from the tonic hexachord into the dominant hexachord, as here, or vice versa. Notice that the only solfege syllable that Schubert changed was this note G in the subject, which was changed to C, when it should have been a D. Since scale degree 5 was treated as a prominent goal of melodic motion early in the subject, that motion should be redirected towards scale degree 1 in the answer to create a melodic balance. So Schubert makes this adjustment to create a tonal answer. All of that should be review from the last video in the series. So the fact that the Bach motif does not necessarily begin on scale degree 1 or 5 is not any kind of problem. In fact, it could be used as a subject in several different keys, which we will see in a moment. The second irregularity of the Bach motif is its chromaticism. Bach had a reputation for composing highly chromatic fugue subjects, like this one from the final fugue of the first book of the Well-Tempered Clavier, where the subject touches on all twelve notes of the chromatic scale. This works almost like a summary for the whole book, which moved systematically through all twenty-four major and minor keys. Notice that Bach groups these chromatic notes into two-note pairs separated by a half-step, which is an organization that resembles the four notes of the Bach motif. Consider this fugue subject by Scarlatti, 
the notes of which, according to legend, he transcribed as his cat walked across his keyboard. If Bach's name had been longer, he might have ended up with an equally random group of notes for his musical insignia. Both of these examples make for intimidating fugue subjects because of their chromaticism. But, as we will see, there are common tricks for interpreting chromatic notes in terms of the hexachordal solfege syllables that render them entirely manageable. Getting back to the Bach motif, Carl Philippe Emmanuel Bach composed this riddle canon using the notes of his family name. He left a very suggestive clue printed above the canon that relates back to the hexachordal solfege syllables. Fa, mi, and mi, fa is all of music. This clue turns out to be relevant for understanding the Bach motif in many of its different contexts, not just in this riddle canon. If you want to solve the canon yourself, I'll leave that to you. The solution I came up with is available on my Patreon page. Here is a fugue that was probably composed by Bach, although its authenticity is in doubt, that uses the B-A-C-H motif in the key of C major, and it shows one of the most straightforward ways to set the motif. The first two notes, B flat and A, can be interpreted as Fa and Mi in the subdominant hexachord built on F, while the second pair of notes form Fa and Mi in the dominant hexachord built on G. When the third voice enters with the subject in the second system, we can see that the first Fa note is interpreted as the chordal seventh of a C dominant seventh chord. Chordal sevenths resolving down by step are a very common way to set a pair of fa mi notes. In the second pair of notes, the note C is harmonized as the root of a C major triad that progresses down by half step to the third of a G major triad. So here we see the first fa mi harmonized with root motion down by fifth, and in the second, harmonized by root motion up by fifth. Next example, Bach sets the motif in the key of B flat so that the subject begins on scale degree one. If we peek down at the entry of the tenor voice in the second system, we can see that Bach harmonizes both of the Fa Mi pairs the same way, as the root of a triad moving to the third of a triad up the circle of fifths, just like we saw in the previous example. In the first case, this is a B flat triad moving to an F triad and in the second case, C minor moves to G major. The second measure of the fugue subject is also made out of descending half-step pairs, Fa Mi in a hexachord built on C, then in one built on F, B flat, and E flat, moving down the circle of fifths. In order to harmonize these Fa Mi's moving down the circle of fifths, Bach treats them as chordal sevenths resolving to chordal thirds, he also chooses the most direct kind of counterpoint for chordal sevenths, which is the half-step resolving upwards, mi-fa, instead of fa-mi. These mi-fa pairs are, in essence, the soprano cadence that we learned about back in the videos on counterpoint in triads and seventh chords. This brings us back to the example from the beginning of the video, where Bach places the motif this time in the context of the key of D minor. Bach's harmonization in this case treats the first B flat as the third of a G minor triad, 
and the A as the root of an A minor triad in first inversion. The C is treated as the seventh of a dominant seventh chord, and the B that it resolves to is the third of a G triad. And in our last example of the Bach motif, Johann Georg Albrechtsberger treats it in the key of G minor. The first B flat is treated as the seventh of a C sharp diminished seventh chord, which resolves down by step to the fifth of a D minor triad. C is then also treated as a chordal seventh that resolves down by step. These examples show that even a somewhat random group of notes, like the B-A-C-H motif, can serve as a fugue subject in many different keys. We saw examples in C major, B flat major, D minor, and G minor, and I'm sure there are other harmonizations of the subject that would work equally well in other key areas. Can you come up with a harmonization of the Bach motif in the key of, let's say, F major? I will leave you with another musical cipher, this one invented by Simon Zechter during that lesson with Schubert that I mentioned earlier in the video. He gave Schubert this fugue subject as a homework. He wanted Schubert to compose a fugue based on the notes derived from his own name. In German, the note E flat is pronounced S. CH, and there is no U, so he leaves a rest, B, E, and then another rest for the R and the T. Unfortunately, Schubert died within nine days of this lesson with Zechter, so he never composed that fugue. Simon Zechter completed the fugue and published it as his Opus 43 in memoriam of Schubert.